How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be doing some electrical diagnostic work. We have a riding lawnmower, and when we turn the key, the solenoid clicks, but the starter does not engage. So let's get right into it. So I have a Yardworks riding mower here. It is a shift on the go 42 inch 155 series. Now doing a test on the battery here with my multimeter, we can see we're only getting 7.47 volts, which means this is in fact a dead battery. So using my eliminator battery booster here, I'm gonna supply 12 volts to the battery and we're gonna try to start this thing because yesterday when I turned the key, the solenoid clicked, but like I said, the starter wouldn't turn over the engine. So this could simply just be a case of a dead battery. Okay, so with the brake on, and my battery booster on. I'm gonna come over here and turn the key and see what happens. Okay, so on this model, the solenoid is in the back, somewhere near the battery. So we can hear the solenoid clicking, but the starter is not engaging. So there's a positive cable going from the battery to the key switch, that's known as a powered key switch. And then when you turn the key switch into the start position, it sends 12 volts back to the solenoid, which in this case, it's back here. So I know that the key switch is working because the key switch is taking 12 volts from the battery and putting it to the solenoid, but the power isn't going from the solenoid to the starter here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set my multimeter here to volts DC and I'm going to put my red positive right on to the starter cable here and then we're going to take the black lead from my multimeter and stick it to the engine and that will give us a ground and then what we'll do is we'll turn the key over and see if 12 volts is in fact being supplied to the starter okay so I got my multimeter set to 20 volts DC and I have my leads held on to the starter So we can hear the solenoid clicking, but 12 volts is not being supplied to the starter cable, which means that it's not a case of a burnt out starter where 12 volts is going to the starter, but it's simply seized. So this is a case of the solenoid not sending power through the two terminals. So using a slotted screwdriver, I've just come and popped out the battery hold down bar there, and then I'm gonna disconnect the battery. We're gonna remove the battery, and then we'll be able to have a little better look at the solenoid under there. So with the battery out, it appears that the solenoid is on the rear left side of the machine. So it might be a little difficult, but we can see those bolts there. At the back of the machine here, these bolts are what hold the solenoid into position. So I'm gonna remove those, and then we're gonna pull our solenoid out. Now there's gonna be a ground cable on the right bolt here, and we know that the solenoid's getting a good ground because we can hear the solenoid clicking, and it wouldn't click if it didn't have a good ground. So we're gonna go ahead, remove those bolts, and we're gonna lift the solenoid up and pull it out. So once you get those bolts out, you can go ahead and pull your solenoid out like this. And we can see that this is what's known as a four post solenoid because it has its own battery positive and also its own ground cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing some of these cables and then we can go ahead and bench test this solenoid. Now, if you wanna do one quick test, you can take your multimeter here and put it onto continuity. Take your red lead and put it onto your starter cable here. Then take your black negative lead there and put it onto the starter cable on the starter side of the solenoid, not the battery side. Now we can see that we do in fact have continuity between those two connections, so that cable is good. That just simply shows us that there's not a split in the cable, so we know that the cable is good going from the solenoid to the starter. Okay, so I just got finished filming my how to test a solenoid video. If you guys wanna check that out, it was last week's video and I will link it in the top right of your screen. But I tested the solenoid for this machine and the solenoid works. So we've done a continuity test between the starter cable at the solenoid and the starter cable here. And we know that with the battery booster on, the solenoid clicked, which means that our key switch is working. That means that all of our safety switches are working. The only thing we haven't tested is a continuity test between the battery positive from the battery terminal and the battery positive at the solenoid. So that's what I'm about to do next. So using my multimeter here, we're gonna come down and put it to continuity, just like that and then I'm going to get my battery positive connector and you guys can see that there is quite a bit of corrosion built up there. But what I'm gonna do is put one lead from my multimeter onto this terminal here. Then I'm gonna go down here and put my negative from my multimeter on that. And we're gonna do a basic continuity test. So a little update here. I've done a continuity test between my ground cable. So going from my ground on my battery to the frame in behind the solenoid, that's the one that bolts in behind there. 
and there's continuity between those two connections on this cable here. I've also done a continuity test between my battery positive. So that goes from the battery positive down to the battery side of the solenoid. And then I've also done a test between my cable that goes from my starter side on the solenoid and I've taken my multimeter to this side and I've done a continuity test down there as well and I'm getting continuity between that cable as well. So the only thing that I can think of right now is that it was simply just a bad ground from the battery ground cable side because everything else seemed like it was okay. And I just did a continuity test on my fuse here. So I didn't show you guys, but to do that, you just simply pop your fuse out, set your multimeter to continuity and just touch each ends of the fuse and that's it. So that fuse is good. So I'm gonna put everything back together now and we're just gonna try to get a good connection on my jumper pack here. Now when you go to hook this back up again, it really doesn't matter what side your cable hooks up onto, whether it's the battery on this side and the starter on that side or the battery on this side and the starter on that side. Basically, this solenoid is just acting as a switch. There's a metal bar that goes up and it just makes a connection between those terminals. Okay, so what I did was I reconnected my solenoid and I've gone to a better source of ground just by using the bolt that comes out of the little seat hanger there. And now every time I turn the key, the engine turns over. So I kept doing more and more testing and after I tested the solenoid, the solenoid works pretty much all the time. Additionally, I know that the key switch is good because every time you turn the key, the solenoid back here clicks, which means that it's not the key switch because the key switch is sending the 12 volts literally every time you turn the key into the start position. So it's something to do with the solenoid side. Now, like I said, you know, I tested that solenoid multiple times and every time I ended up getting continuity between the two terminals when the solenoid was powered with 12 volts. But this is what you got to do when you're working on electrical stuff, guys. It's all process of elimination. Now, I would like to point out that if you have a bad brake switch, so you're putting your foot on the brake, but the machine is sensing that the brake is not engaged, the solenoid will not click. So when you turn your key, you will hear nothing. So by putting my foot on the brake and turning the key and hearing the solenoid click, I know that the brake switch is functional. So the only thing I could think of right now is just a bad connection on the battery positive because it was a little loose and you could see that it was uh, pretty much ready to break off. So I'm replacing that and common ground cable that goes from the battery down to the frame down here. I don't really like these, you know, you can see that it bolts right up to the frame. So I just took my grinder and just cleaned up the frame a little bit. I know it grounds through the bolt, but I'd like to give it a little better ground. So with my new connector on the end of the battery positive, and I've done one on the ground there as well, my battery pack is on. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and depress the brake, turn the key switch over, and we're gonna see if the engine turns over. So let's give this another try. Now I'm not trying to start the engine. I just wanted to see that it would turn over every single time. So I think it was just a case of a bad connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut off my battery booster there, and I think I've solved this issue. I have my customer's 12 volt battery on charge here. Just to note, you always wanna charge your battery in a well-ventilated area, so I'm just doing it outside here because batteries will do what's called off-gassing. So as they charge, there's a chemical reaction happening inside of the battery, and they can produce a little bit of gas. So you just wanna be careful not to do it inside of your garage with all your windows and doors closed. Now, my customer did say that uh, if I do go ahead and charge the battery and the battery doesn't hold a charge, to go ahead and buy a new battery. So if I do, I'm gonna go ahead and buy the largest battery I can that will fit inside of the rear here where the battery goes. So what you wanna do whenever you're shopping with a battery, I know it might sound strange, but you wanna take a tape measure. So measure the available space you have and then go ahead and get the largest battery you can get. And then on top of that, you wanna find the most cold cranking amps in that battery size. Okay, so I got the old battery hooked up just because I wanted to test it. We did charge it and it's holding a charge currently, but you know, in a couple days it could lose a charge. And at that point, my customer can go ahead and just replace a battery because it's super simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to fire this thing up. Okay, so let's test this out. Brake on and we're gonna go down to the key switch here. <laughs> So 
So that's it guys. Step by step process of elimination. Go over all your cables, go over all your connectors, go over your components such as your key switch and your solenoid. Go over your battery, that's the main thing. That's what you wanna start with so you have a baseline. And if you go step by step and do your process of elimination, then you'll end up solving the issue. Now, like I've said in previous electrical videos, depending on where you start, you may find your issue right at the beginning or you may find your issue right at the end. But eventually, as long as you do that process of elimination, you will find your issue. But the issue my customer wanted fixed was starting. It wouldn't start. You'd turn the key and the solenoid would click. Turns out it was just a bad battery positive connection and it could also have been a bad ground. So we took care of both of those issues. We charged his battery and my customer should be happy that now we put a new fuel filter, a new air filter, spark plug, and we also changed the oil on this machine. So it's been about a week now since I filmed this video and my customer has not called me. So I'm assuming that it's a job well done. The battery has held its charge. And like I said, it was just a case of a bad connection. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week and check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.